Previously, Previously on, on Resident, Resident Evil Revelations. Talked over you, Parker. Jesus. No one could have lived through that. And stories of their resurrection are true. Then the setup that got Jill and Parker, it was all <laughs> It's a trap. Yeah. It's a trap. Guarantee it. But Ryan, we'll go after Jill and Parker. Make your way to the Mediterranean. Where? Damn it. Bastard took all my weapons. Can you reach HQ? No, comms are as it seems. Stuck here. Who the hell are you? Whoa. I hope Jill shot first. Welcome to episode three on Planet Seekatron. We are playing Ghosts of Veltro in Resident Evil Revelations. And this game, as I remember it being, is really, really fun. Has a lot of, uh, has an older school feel of Resident Evil. When four and five and six started to come out, I, some of those games, each one started to lose me a little bit more because I felt like it was pulling away from what I liked about Resident Evil, although I still liked some of those games, at least Resident Evil 4 and 5. Uh, 5 had to grow on me. 5 is better when you play as co op. Uh, but once the, I started to you know feel those out, I was like, okay, I can appreciate them for what they were. But this game feels like it has like a classic Resident Evil feel. It's cheesy, it's goofy, and it has some funny, scary, uh, fun and scary moments. Um, so here we are, flashback to Terra Grigia one year ago. So you can start, we're going to see some of the events that led up to still our current uh, position. I can still fight. That's the spirit. It's over. <laughs> John likes says you have a juice problem. You need an intervention. Well, you know. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I love juice. If you watch my Evil Within playthroughs, you know I love juice. I love that green juice. Looks like Ecto Cooler. Uh, so we are playing as FBC members now on Terra Grigia. So this is pre-BSAA involvement. And we have our commander up there. Who is um, you know, talking on the phone, I guess. And uh, we're Parker, and we are training this cadet here. And Jessica is uh, with us. Prepare to go home. Split up and get to the helipad on the roof. That's an order. I'll cover the hallway with Jessica. Cadet, make sure they reach the heliport. Fine. Parker, they've started evacuation procedures here. Oh, and there's O'Brien. So, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The BSAA were here. We're going to hang out and listen to what they got to say. Would simply cripple our cause. Surely you can understand that. I'm afraid I cannot. Obliterating hmm. the site by satellite is only a quick fix. We could lose crucial evidence. Use of the satellite has already been approved. We can clean up this And like I said in Resident Evil 7, I think that's why the Easter egg of Clive O'Brien's book is in there. Uh, because I think a lot of developers that worked on this worked on Resident Evil 7. Oh, that sounds dark. Perhaps a dozen of them. Are we supposed to be hearing this? The Men like us can exist thanks to groups like that. And he'll just let all those people die. Are you finished now, Director O'Brien? It's like we're watching it's like when Everyone, you're in a roller coaster. You your orders. Move into position. <laughs> um with me. Yes, sir. Alright, so Raymond's going with him. Yeah, Raymond got wounded during the the battle but yeah he's a cadet that might be getting a little brainwashed that guy because that guy's clearly a bad guy I mean listen to how he talks <laughs> um, that commander dude yeah so the FBC are here the BSAA already pulled out they know that Terry Regia is a lost cause so Kill 
kill all enemies in the hall. All right. Get to the chopper. Yeah, dude. Hunters. Why do they have to be hunters? No, oh, Veltro probably didn't make any of them. They probably just found a warehouse of umbrellas that just had 20 of them in there. And they're just like, all right, what's good? Pick up these 20, we'll replicate the data and make like 20 more or something. Heck, if they even just had one, they could do it. Whoa! Where was I on that one? She saved me, but I, I was like too busy reloading my gun. Alright, so yeah, we gotta run around this room. Get everything that's on the... Got handguns now? That takes care of that. Right. Now it's our turn to get on that chopper. That elevator should still be operational. This way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going the right way. Oh, suit. I need to I want to go down and grab any last uh, collectible thing. I saw more hunters out there though. I'm like a little nervous. Uh, break time, yay, this is a great way to kick off October. Yeah, I thought, you know, maybe, I, this was the plan. I originally wanted to buy this for October to do, play this at the beginning of October and play Revelations 2 at the end of October. That was kind of my goal. Um, and then I thought I wouldn't be able to deliver on that goal because uh, of money. Um, but luckily I had that credit from the return that we did for Marvel vs. Capcom. So, uh, trade one Capcom game for another, and then we uh, put the difference over on Evil Within 2. So we'll be able to get that game as well when it comes out next Friday, which is October the 13th. So we'll play this, you know, for the next couple days. We got Telltale Batman to play. Um, and then we have, uh, whoa. Uh, Evil Within 2, that'll probably take, you know, a couple days to beat or a week. And we'll probably do all the bonus stuff. Anything that comes with it, we'll, you know, we'll take our time and have fun. Alright, head for the other elevator. Whoa, dude! Hunters are probably my favorite Resident Evil monsters. Um, I don't like that these ones disintegrate, though. But I think that's because as they were cr developing new monsters, they were... Um, I don't know why I shot so wildly. Um, they were making them disintegrate so there would be no evidence left behind. Because obviously they had problems with uh, you know, Wesker stealing combat data. So uh, I think they were just trying to avoid stuff like that. Stab, 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 ow. Stab, 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 stabby, stabby, stab, oh. Stab, 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 stab you to death. All right, as long as I got one, because I saw, I figured there was an herb over here, so if we used one, we'll just pick that one up again. No more stabbing, though. Have you played Amnesia, the game? I have not. Uh, I've seen it, though. Ow. I knew it. Shot it in the balls. Oh, he ain't happy. Let's do this, homie. Yeah, let's do that. Let's tango where I'm like not shooting you. There we go. 
Yeah. Done and done. I see that grenade right at the girl, though. Thank, thank goodness friendly fire isn't on. Uh, but no, I have not played Amnesia. I, um, I know there's... I've had a couple recommendations for horror games to play this month. Uh, we're not going to do sh straight horror all month. Like, uh, we'll probably play... Um, like, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, we're going to play Batman Telltale, obviously. Episode 2 that just uh, came out like a week ago. Um, I think there's a, a, a Marvel vs. Or not Marvel vs. Capcom. An Injustice 2 DLC character coming out. Uh, this month. I think it might be Raiden or maybe it's Hellboy. I don't know. Um, but we'll probably play a little bit of that when it comes out. So it's not going to be strict horror. And on, obviously on Halloween day itself, we play Halo games. So we're going to play, we're going to have Halloween um, on that day. Uh, on the day before Halloween, we'll play the first half of Halo Reach. And on Halloween day, we'll play the second half. Oh, file! FBC's charter, the Federal Bioterrorism Commission, was founded by the U.S. government to be the enforcing agency of the guidelines set forth in the National Species Protection Act. This document outlines the FBC's charter and the responsibilities of its members. The FBC is charged with protecting the United States and her interests from biological threats. Our organization will work with other countries and their respective wildlife protection uh, organs to guard public health. As such, we are tasked with ensuring the biological safety of the public at large. The duties of all FBC members include the research, training, and support of the biological community. Policies will be f uh, fomented on a needs-only basis with any additional budget expenditures and extraordinary activities being approved by a plenary session of the Wildlife Protection Committee. The FBC chair is selected by the Wildlife Protection Committee. The chair's duty includes complete oversight of the FBC and coordination of all activities with respective U.S. cabinet officials. The FBC chair is the final overseer of the National Animal Protection Community. All members of the National Animal Protection Community are entitled to request help from the chair, including the Secretary of State and Defense and the Director of National Intelligence. However, the chair has final authority on all matters of national biological safety. That's a lot of power for that one person. Whoever's in the chair. Man, I'm so glad we came in this room that I was unsure of. I was like, it's a dead end, but sometimes in Res Evil, when you go to a dead end, you get rewarded. You also get attacked. But, hey, it's worth it. Bullets. Daily Courier Article 1, London Daily Courier, T Tragedy and Terra Grigia by Donatello Lusacci. A beast slouches towards Europe to be born, and that beast is the Federal Bioterrorism Commission. What is unique about the beast is that the Federal Species Protection Committee that gave birth to it was no beast itself and was intended to assist the U.S. in its counter-bioterrorism efforts. Unfortunately, Europe has become the home to a tragedy that has roused the beast. The FBC has taken complete control of the biohazard outbreak in Terra Grigia and has, in effect, barred the participation of other countries. Terra Grigia is an aquapolis that was developed jointly by U.S. and European teams to research and develop alternative energy sources. The impetus behind the city's development was twofold. The Europeans wanted to halt climate change and the Americans hoped to develop energy sources for Africa. To that end, uh, to that end the city was... Uh, to that end, the city was placed strategically in the Mediterranean Sea. Oh, I see. That that end of the city was placed. Strate I'm sorry, that seemed worded weird, but it, it wasn't. 
Uh, Terra Grigia has enjoyed cooperative administrations by both sides and has been held up as a model of successful U.S.-European cooperation. The terrorist attack in Terra Grigia has put the kibosh on that. According to conditions stipulated in the treaty outlining Terra Grigia's governance, both the U.S. and Europe have equally authority or equal authority during a terrorist attack only during the event of bioterrorism does the fbc assume a leadership role the fbc was formed with the express purpose of dealing with threats posed by bioterrorism they have a crack squad of soldiers on permanent standby and by that measure they have the most expensive charter of any organization in europe during a time of crisis they have the blessing of the u.s to take charge and control the situation and that is how the fbc came to be in charge of the current chaos and terra Grecia. FBC Commissioner Morgan Lansdale has announced that EU involvement will not be tolerated while uh, his organization deals with the crisis. So none of, I guess, no, no, no one from Europe or anyone, he's not allowing any outside interference. European authorities pressed Lansdale to respect their rights in this matter, and they were able to convince him to bring in Commander Clive O'Brien of the BSAA, a well-respected international civilian group. Uh, the problem, however, is even though O'Brien himself is a bioterrorism expert, he is working with virtually no support staff, which limits the scope of action he can take. While the story on the tragedy is still unfolding, it would seem that the FBC is ignorant of the extent of the suffering in Terra Grigia. Whether Lansdale has the ability and the intelligence to handle this attack without becoming a, a, Yeetsen, a Yeetsen beast also remains to be seen. Um, so, yeah, so anyway... Um, Clive O'Brien is, he's part of the BSAA. The BSAA are a well-respected uh, group that does work with every country to handle BOW outbreaks, any kind of bioterrorism that they ha handle. They come in and they try, they're like the cleaning team and they try to stay one step ahead and prevent attacks too. The It looks like the FBC have a, a different role and different agenda and um, are more diplomatic in a way, and they have like kind of a crack squad of, of soldiers at their disposal, uh, but maybe not as well trained or as efficient as the BSAA, it sounds like. But uh, whoever wrote this article doesn't seem to have a lot of love for them, particularly because uh, Morgan is screwing up. He's not saving anyone, and so and it, and as anyone would be, they're probably frustrated with like. Like, why are you creating red tape where there doesn't mean, need to be red tape? Just let Europe and, and the U.S. come in and help Terra Grigia. And because Morgan isn't doing that, um, it looks like Terra Grigia is so, beyond saving now. BSAA director? Not my type. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> I think he's in the right. He needs to stand up to General Morgan. Yeah, I agree. I think... Being in the FBC is not your moral compass. You sound just like it. Still, I don't mind being on the right side of the fight. Back up. Nice. Did we make it to the elevator yet? Oh, the stairs, I mean, yeah, we're going on the stairs. That's always a bummer. Like, if if you're designing a video game, don't just put, like, a, a sign. Like, I would kick that sign over and get down there. I mean, we've climbed over three of them. So next time, maybe just have the stairs destroyed to where it's just not safe to go down. Like, I mean, you hear gunfire and everything in the background, or just have, like... A sea of monsters down like we just look down and there's just like a hundred hunters you know so yeah I, I don't like when video games do that Resident Evil does that a lot it's like oh I can't get around this desk Whoa. yeah do something like that like oh you can't go on floor five because there's monsters on the other side What do we got here? Hand grenade, machine gun ammo. Sweet. Jomily with her fish hands. Hey, Jomily, new stream, new dream. What you drinking? Oh, snap. <laughs> Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Nothing scarier than fish hands. 
Fish hands are pretty pretty terrifying, John. Thanks for the fish hands emoji. Z. Hi. Stay down, ugly. <laughs> Mother <laughs> Jomily, I'm sorry. <laughs> For those who don't know or watching later, we have a game that we play on this channel. The first person to ask in each stream, once Jomily's in here, the game is activated when Jomily is in the chat. So uh, once that happens, it's the first person who could, uh, who asks, what's everyone drinking today? Uh, so yeah, <laughs> got you this time, Jom. And Jom can just walk in the chat and start with that question. I mean, it's a little unfair, but she can. It's, it's, uh, it's in the rules, so she's allowed to do that. So that's why sometimes it's hard to get her. But I got you that time. Drinking coffee. <laughs> Not nothing scarier than fish hands except my wrath. Hey, welcome back, True Stoner. How are you, dude? Thanks for coming back in. So I got like an itchy nose, like out of nowhere. Some someone would probably be like, oh, you, that means money's coming to you, but I don't get paid till next Friday, so that's a lie. What was that? Get through here. Give me a hand. Yeah, lady, come on. For the love of God. Whoa. Jessica, come on, we would have been shredded by now. Okay, well. <laughs> System, little bastards. I hope this holds them. All right, hand grenades and bullets. That's what I had for breakfast. Well, they're giving us a lot of stuff in here. That can only mean that we're screwed. All right, we're loaded up. Where's the elevator? Elevator? Ah, there it is. All right, bring it, you creeps. Damn, come on. They're almost here. Bullets for breakfast. I eat bullets for breakfast. Whoa. I think they're here for you. It's because you're a flirt. Sorry, I don't date animal monsters. Ow. You guys suck. Dang, they're coming from the ceilings. Ow. Take that jerk face. Thanks for jumping in front of me, because uh, I thought I was going to have to turn around to shoot you. You're very kind, monster. Whew. 
Puh. Goodbye, boys. You son of a monkey. I'm just kidding. You're probably not part monkey at all. I think actually, what are the hunters? I want to say there's like frog DNA in them. That's why they hop, but they're like, I can't remember. Whoa. Oh, we just got to get out of here. Oh, dang. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I get for the, the part monkey comment, I guess. Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, I don't know. They're just jumping around like baboons. <laughs> That's your new rap album, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, I really only sing suburban sing-alongs, which are more like folky. Yeah, and like Raccoon City, even though I mean it's it's interesting because it's like at this point it's probably only like in the timeline, maybe like like twelve years in the past, maybe or, or, or maybe someone can correct me on the actual timeline of when this takes place because I think Resident Evil Five takes place almost ten years after it's like two thousand eight, so it's like almost ten years after Resident Evil, the events of Resident Evil One and Two, which is in nineteen ninety eight. Um, so this probably only like eight or nine years uh, from it maybe so uh it's interesting that raccoon city is still fresh in people's mind it's like it was uh, to them and like a big catastrophe like how we reference maybe like you know september 11th or something uh a whole city in the midwest was wiped out by a nuke uh, to contain a virus you know and at first people didn't know it was to contain a virus and then that truth started to come out and that's how umbrella like their stocks plummeted and everything like that and then the people behind the missile launch was like the guy in Resident Evil 6, I think. I think the family, I think they claimed responsibility for nuking Raccoon City. And then they nuked an, another town, like a college town in Resident Evil 6. Um, so, uh, and then I think, yeah, then China, didn't China get nuked too? Or I can't remember, because I know the end of the game took place in China. Um, I can't remember 6 that well, I'll be honest. Even though we played it not too long ago, I... I don't really like that game, so the story doesn't stick in my head that well. Ah, check this out. All right, so... It's literally like Raccoon City all over again, because a giant space satellite is going to fire a blue beam right down on us. They got to contain the threat, so... Just getting fried by the sun. So bright. Oh, look at that. Oof. And you gotta think, even for. Japanese storytellers and the people making this game, like, seeing a tragedy like like a September 11th or something along those lines, or just any other tragedy that happens in the world every freaking year, it seems. Um, maybe not on that scale, but, like, what just happened in Vegas. Like, these games now, Resident Evil, became a response to that. I think they were, when they first started, they were like, oh, it's secret government stuff and, like, you know, uh, and, and pharmaceutical companies and, and, and companies going too far with scientific research. And it's pretty standard horror science fiction storytelling. And then I think there was just, like, this shift of, like, all right, we can now aim our stories towards what's happening in the world today, which is terrorism, you know? And we could have these monsters being sold on the black market like nukes and weapons, you know? And uh, I think that was probably the only logical direction that they could have taken this franchise so it's neat to see them explore it especially in this game they really explored in this one uh four obviously 
went more like a cult route and things like that. But five was, you know, about arms deals and, and Wesker, you know, buying up missiles so he can put Ouroboros in them and then shoot them all over the, into the atmosphere and spread them all over the world and all this other stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm, it makes sense that they would go in that direction. So I, I like that. But then I also like stuff like Resident Evil 7 where they went back and told a personal story and they didn't just keep escalating global threats. They went with something a little bit more reserved. Um, so I, I appreciated that about Resident Evil 7. Okay. 9 p.m. The bridge. Oh. Oh, he didn't shoot. We yeah. shot. Isn't it? <laughs> the BSAA. A little too late. What is the FBC doing here? <laughs> answer me, Raymond. You can hear I don't that. Have to answer any piano. It's it's a little bit like you the save no room from this. the old Resident Evils. There's no time to fight. We've got to give it a rest. <laughs> Dun, na, 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 Even know na, na, na. why you're here or who you're fighting. Raymond, stop right there. Nothing will change unless you get your hands dirty. It's like they're out in the middle of nowhere and they ran into a guy with a a, a gas mask on and then they run into Raymond. So the FBC it's like, is on this ship too. but they've seen really no one else. It's like, without any to me, I'm like, just look at the obvious. Like, look what's in front of you. Uh, that's always uh, the, yeah, keep it simple. That's what they always say when you're trying to solve a mystery. Keep it simple. Is there any more things in here to scan? Nope. Going down. Punch it, kick it. There we go. Gotta get those scans in before they die, man. I mean, although I'm doing pretty good on health right now, so it's not that big. Hey, a helm key. Shut your face. I wasn't expecting to find a key so soon. I mean, like, we there's a lot of doors we gotta open, so I guess it makes sense, but yeah, still a little... Um, wasn't unsure if we would do it in this chapter or the next one. For all staff and crew, the Queen Zenobia is a pleasure cruise. The liner that... Uh, I'm sorry. Let me read that again. Uh, for all staff and crew, the Queen Zenobia is a pleasure cruise liner that provides world-class service with the comfort of a luxury hotel for our passengers. This ship offers numerous services and facilities for our guests. As a representative for this ship, it is your job to be familiar with all the facilities that can be found here. The following lists outline some of the major uh, facilities on this ship. Please read each one carefully. Uh, John says, punch, kick, kick, punch. It's all in the mind. If you want to test me, I'm sure you'll find. <laughs> Parappa the Rappa. Uh, promenade Hall. Boasting an area of 1,500 millimeter squared, the ship's promenade hall has three floors and is more spacious than any other ship in the world. The interior is done in a gothic style with ceilings covered in chandeliers. Its beauty and style rivals that of the finest opera houses. Casino. The ship's casino can be found next to the promenade hall. All kinds of gaming pleasures await our guests, including card games and slot machines. Everything guests would expect from a casino can be found here in 24 hours a day. Restaurants and shops, the Promenade Hall has designer goods and brand name stores from all over the world. Guests can relax at our many restaurants and bars. There are also shops that cater to our guests' every day, uh, guests everyday needs. Emergency communication room. There is an emergency communication room next to the promenade that can be used as a safety point during an emergency. Crew can also use this room to uh, transmit an emergency distress call should the need arise. Uh, solarium. The shuttered glass of the solarium overlooks the world's largest onboard swimming pool. This romantic spot has been a favorite destination for many of our passengers. Be on the lookout for couples 
who sneak uh, in after hours? Is that what it said? Okay. I'm guessing that's what it said. Is there seriously nothing to scan in this room? More custom parts. Nobody drew a dick on the the board over there. That's nice. Nice to show that these crew members here were semi-mature. <laughs> All right. Oh, I see the crest for the shoddy. Shoddy, shoddy. Who wants to party? What's this? Ooh, a feather. Discarded message. Oh God, please help me. This can't be happening. Don't leave me to die in this hell. I'm trapped here. There are monsters here. Real ones. Everyone's dead or dying. There are no survivors. Shit, we're all gonna die. I kept it short and sweet. Hey, a map. We should find an emergency communication room if we go through the hall. Crest. History of the Queen Zenobia. All right, buckle in, kids. Uh, tonnage, 148,000 gross tons. 90,000 tons, blah, blah, blah. Can seat uh, 2,200 people. Or passengers, it can take 2,200. This uh, Paraguas line, P P Paraguas line flagship was uh, constructed in 1978. The interior is designed to replicate that of ships of the 1930s, the golden age of cruise ships. The design was based on blueprints left by George Trevor before his disappearance. So again, these people who are writing these files and notes, understanding the George Trevor lineage and referencing back to that again, more Resident Evil one references, but that's also a lot of the developers on this worked on seven and we got a George Trevor reference in Resident Evil seven as well. Um, newspapers from the time of the ship's con uh, construction report accolades the design received. This ship herself was named after Zenobia, the queen of the uh, Palmarine? Palmarine Empire? Uh, sorry, some of these words I don't remember ever saying out loud. <laughs> like I know I've read this file before, but I, I think because I wasn't on stream, I wasn't reading them out loud, so I never pronounced some of these. Uh, um, Palmarine Empire, who was deposed by the Romans. Like the legendary beauty of her namesake, this ship is also known as the Beauty of the Atlantic and remained one of the most popular cruise ships built in the 20th century. With the rise of air travel supplant, uh, supplanting the popularity of long seafaring voyages, it looked like the Queen Zenobia, along with her sister ship, was destined to be junked in the late 1980s. Uh, fortunately, she was purchased by the Paraguas Line and her steam turbines were replaced with electrical, uh, electric diesel propulsion system. Her hold and cabin areas were expanded and she was upgraded with the latest technology. The Queen Zenobia was born was reborn as a fully functional luxury liner. After its restoration, the Queen Zenobia set out on a cruise around the world followed by one around South America and many, many others. In the future, she will find her way har uh, her main harbor in the Mediterranean for her cruises around Africa. The Queen Zenobia will be bringing pleasure to passengers for years to come. The History of the Queen Zenobia 1995 edition. Uh, Jomi says that's really cool tying it all together. Yeah, it's funny Steve Trevor's, Arch Steve Trevor, that's Wonder Woman. Uh, George Trevor's like, uh, sorry, God, this my nose is like really itching all of a sudden. Um, George Trevor's like has not been forgotten. Uh, for a guy who was left to die in the Spencer Mansion in, in 1998 in Resident Evil 1, it's neat to see him referenced a lot. And it, it makes sense. Every time they're like, oh, we... The reason the decor here looks similar to the house. How do we explain that from a story standpoint? Okay, we'll throw in one file that explains that George Trevor did the blueprints for it. And it shows that George Trevor may have been a one-trick pony when it comes to design, but at the same time, he died before he finished a lot of these designs. So he probably was like, oh, I like this idea. I'll put it in this building. Oh, that building never got made. So I have this design for a design for a boat and I'll put it in the boat design. Oh, the boat's probably not going to get made. Or, you know, if it does, you know, I won't, I won't know because it happened, you know, after his death is when the Zenobia was built. So it's just really neat to see his work expand. Oh, gross. Something came out of him. There's like a hole in his chest, right? And there's maggots. Gross.
Oh, there's a... I, oh, God, I... I was hoping he would have, like, a badge or a file on him, not... Not shotgun shells in his stomach. <laughs> Why? Why? We should go to the emergency communication room. Maybe try to contact HQ. Fine. Fine, Parker. We'll do everything you want to do. Oh, it's not working? Great. Let me get another one of them backtracking beats. Because that's what we're going to do. Right. Backtrack it up. How do you know him? I used to work with him. Let's leave it at that. Damn, why be vague? Just be like, oh, he was a cadet. Like, just tell us how you know him. Doesn't matter. Jill doesn't care. Let's not forget that that's there, because we might need it later. Ooh, shotgun stomach! <laughs> yeah. It'd be one thing if we found shotgun shells and it was like, oh, we can't use these. They're already been used. Like, he shot himself in the gut or something. Um, before he could turn into a monster. Let's go to the lower cabins, because I think that's where the crest was. I can't remember. But we'll go through the lower cabins, and we'll go through it all and go up to the upper cabins. Um, yeah, it might have been in the upper cabins, but that's all right. We got to backtrack regardless, so... So there is something in here. Whoa. Dang. Oh, do we scan that through the floor? Is that upstairs? Yeah, it's upstairs. All right. Fine. Whoa. Whoa. she has got projectiles. Damn it. Come on, dude. Follow the beeps. You know he did. Wow, he dropped easily. What kind of key does this need? We can use the helm key on this. You know what? Before we do... Let's go get the shoddy and let's... That's the anchor key, right? Okay. I thought there was another helm key around here somewhere. Like that we could use the helm key on. Oh yeah, I, I was thinking there was another door around here because I thought we saw two. I mean, I know we saw two anchor ones, but let's go check. We're gonna come half. We're gonna have to come back through here anyway uh, when we get the um, the which call it like the the card reader like the for the card reader like we're gonna have to come back through all this anyway. So I don't want to like linger too much. Boom. Yeah, I gotta remember to scan these guys. That's the trick to this game too, is like scanning them when they're still alive. But that's okay, because we're we're full on 
um, herbs and stuff anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, you see our map in the top right corner. You can see us moving towards a, uh, a red door. I think that's where the other helm key goes. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Sweet. Thanks, memory. Note found in room 303. What the hell is going on? Monsters are crawling all over the ship. They're tearing it to pieces. I've never seen monsters like this. Their movements are stiff, stilted, but it's all over if they get a hold of you. Those pieces of shit monsters ate my friend Hassan. Bastards. I used my gun to frighten them off, giving me time to get the hell out of there. The bullet went straight through its arm. Thank God. These monsters have bones like an old woman. Uh, there's nowhere left to run now. Damn monster twisted my leg good. Hell, I've run out of ammo too. God only knows how I'm going to survive this. Yikes. I always like that the files are always really interesting to me. Ooh, illegal custom parts. Um... Because you get like, you get a glimpse of like a story, like a really interesting story. Does that tie into the game in any major way? No, of course not. It, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, but um, it's neat to hear about the people that, that didn't make it, that, that tried. Some of them who tried to go down valiantly, some of them who went down cowardly. So, um, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I'm, Resident Evil 1 was with the Keeper's Diary, obviously, is the most memorable of those, where you learned about the guy who first got infected and the lump of skin fell off his back and the dog started barking at him because they could sense that he was uh, infected. You know, so... Um, it's just, there's a lot of cool, um, cool like, side characters in the Resident Evil universe that you only know through the journals. Resident Evil 2 had a good one too because you got to read about like the, the last stand that the cops made um, during the siege of Raccoon City when when um, when the zombies took over. And you just, you see them like, oh yeah, I told this guy to go board up this window. He never came back, you know, like, or um, I was trying to protect this girl. That might've been from Resident Evil 3 actually, where he's like, I'm trying to protect this girl she got bit and uh you know if it comes to it i'll shoot her and shoot myself or something like that and you just hear about all these really crazy sad stories of uh of these people that tried to live and i think that helps in a small way elevate the universe like it helps the games because you're like all right there is a lot at stake there's innocent people died you know some not so innocent Ooh, that description of the bones was good, though. Made me cringe. Yeah, <laughs> talking about uh, being brittle. Yeah. All right. Look at this place. Steve Trevor was quite the designer. Steve Trevor. George Trevor. He's like an opera house in here. So, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give World War II pilot Steve Trevor from Wonder Woman all the credit. <laughs> I keep messing that up. Note left in front of the emergency communication room. This is the emergency communication room. No one gets in without my permission and not without my key. If you want in, come find me at my usual spot on the promenade deck, your comms officer. There's a message scrawled underneath. This is crap. The ship is crawling with freaks and monsters. I'm going to the promenade because at least I can find food there. Anyone who's still alive can meet me up there. You know where to find me. I am not going out like that. I can promise you that. Hope I'm not the only survivor. Your friendly neighborhood comes, officer. <laughs> oh. It's like the same painting. Not that one. So that right there uh, is 
in Re is Resident Evil 5, I believe. I believe that is the Spencer Mansion in Europe, um, where Jill dives through the window, tackles Wesker, and they fall down into that water. Um, I believe that's that castle, uh, which is pretty cool. I, I They put a lot of little nods and references into this. There's a shopping area, which is where we're going to have to go at some point. I think we're going the right way. I think. Whoa. What is these things? Whoa. There we go. The door is bolted shut. Oh, we got that screwdriver. Lucky us. Congrats, Steve Trevor. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <Emily. laughs> Good old Steve Trevor for doing all these amazing things. print what up we may have found them all in this episode or, or not maybe not <laughs> just just getting a little you know happy that i am finding them cleaning report for next on duty there are notes handwritten in the comments column of the report march 25th there were some kind of barnacles sticking to the bottom of the pool don't know where they came from please take care of them March 30th, the barnacles are back again. Look like they are grouping together into a little colony. Maybe there are they are a new species. Might be fun to keep some as a pet. April 10th, um, looks like the pipe that distributes the water was damaged. It was fixed, but there's a chance there was some contamination on this end. The guy in charge of security wasn't very happy. Maybe it has something to do with the new species of barnacle. Uh, April 12th, yikes, that's no new species of barnacle, that's for sure. The report ends here. Um, that's interesting because that's over the span of like two weeks of a slow like build or something, you know, of these of these barnacles infection. So uh, I wonder, I can't remember what happened to this boat, like if it was slowly infected or maybe it was near the Terra Grigia and it got infected that way. I was, th I thinking, I was thinking we had to go through the hatch, but maybe that's just Resident Evil 2 talking. All right, so we activated the system. Oh, okay, good. Oh. What are these things? They're like giant slugs. Gross. Yeah, so I think if we run around the, um, the boat some and do a couple of the other little things, open some of the other doors, that's when... Uh, we can come back up here and that room will be clear or not clear but i think there's like a path we can that opens up all right nothing around here man That's crazy. Hmm. 
Veronica. Uh, I had heard a rumor that a, or actually no, it was on Barry's channel, I think. Where's Barry? Uh, he posted about um, about there being a a character in Resident Evil DLC, the Resident Evil 7 Not a Hero DLC, called Veronica that talks to Chris Redfield over the walkie. So that's pretty neat. I mean, of all names to pick, that's a really interesting one because obviously of Code Veronica, um, which Chris Redfield was a game Chris Redfield was in. So uh, I thought that was neat. Uh, I wonder if there's any significance or if they just did it just to be like, you know, get people talking. Um, I mean, I know there can be more than one Veronica in a universe, but it's just, uh, you know, when that one's such a specific name, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you kind of uh, expect it to have something to do with that game. Oh, what up? That's a big hand. A handprint, dude. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say that's a that's a big freaking hand. Anchor. Hmm. All right, let's get on the elevator. I think that's where we gotta go next. Always looking for things to scan. It's not working. Son of a bee. I guess we'll just go through here then. That music too that we just heard in that hallway, that's also I think a um, an older Resident Evil theme reconfigured with uh, new elements. Um, Um, I had to stop laughing so hard just now. Everyone's favorite RE character, Steve Trevor, <laughs> cannot unhear it. Need to make this canon. We'll have to tie Steve Trevor's World War II adventures into Resident Evil lore. Uh, yeah, it's a Veronica, not the Highlander. There can be more than one. <laughs> but it's likely a nod to that Veronica. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, probably just a nod to her. Do you hear that? Uh, that's how Steve Trevor sounded. Uh, Steve, God, Johnly. <laughs> that's how Steve sounded. There is a Steve in Resident Evil lore and in Code Veronica. We found the promenade deck. Um, and Steve uh, is a character that Claire Redfield runs into in Code Veronica. Uh, and st I can't remember Steve's last name. Uh, but yeah, there is a Steve. Oh my God. And I called him Steve Trevor. Um, but when, when he was dying, that's how he sounded. He was like, Claire. Yeah, I got other guns now. Everyone's favorite character. <laughs> I know I'm screwing up left and right, John. There's monsters hiding behind every corner. We have yet to find one survivor. This is the Queen Shinobi. All right, we can upgrade our weapon. Z. We'll add two damage to the shoddy. We'll add fire rate to this. Oh, we got two fire rates. Let's add a fire rate to the shotgun too. And we'll add the burst to the handgun. Two shot burst. 
cool. Oh no, the laughter is real. I didn't mean to do that to your brain. <laughs> good morning. What's up, Hunter? How's it going? How are you? Hunter says he's good. Dude, man, good to see you. Or, you know what I mean. <laughs> good to see you, Hunter. Now, remove your shirt. What? Mayday. Shotgun ammo case. Locked from the other side. Dang it. It's got a life preserver on it, too. Run, see, can see me. <laughs> oh, I'll see you too. Wherever you run to, I'll be there waiting for my free hug. <laughs> this is the Queen Zenobia. Emergency call number. We crawl in there? Here we go. Yeah, we we'll gave it away. Oh, shoot. Oh, this thing uh, just doesn't die, does it? Can I crawl down there? Nope. Whoa, what up, bros? Oh, they come out of there. Okay. Oh, he's dead. Whew. I see that. Wow, dude. The life buoy key. Is that the key to the emergency communication? Wow. That was a lot. That guy took a lot of shots. <laughs> Hoboken, no joking. Um, yeah, I thought we could crawl through those vents. I was like, oh, look, a vent. I can... I'll get away. Nope. Negative, Ghost Rider. All right, let's reload everything. I have no shotgun shells, though. Well, spoke too soon. Handgun ammo. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was a nice little rush. Wait, we can... Um... We can unlock this now. Yeah, boy. So that was the commanding guy, huh? That was the guy who left that note like, Hey, I'm your friendly neighborhood commander. Just come find me and I'll give you a key. Yeah. Don't do me any favors, jerk face. Don't, don't do me any more favors. 
jerk face. Oh. <gasps> yes. Dude, this screwdriver is getting a lot of use. Parker's getting a kiss by that monster. Oh, dude, he loves it, man. That thing's all tongue. Parker's favorite. in here. No hand prints to scan. All right. Uh, the deck, I guess. Yeah, because I think I know where it goes to the bridge, but I don't think we need to go to the bridge just yet. Oh, handprint. Bam. Look at all these card reader doors. I need card readers. I need a card. Someone give me a card. Pick a card, any card. Oh. Scanny, scanny. You try to be sneaky, sneaky. In the trash, there's magnum rounds. What? I mean, I know it's Resident Evil. We're supposed to get a magnum eventually, but... Oh. Yeah, we still need the card, though. Man. Magnum rounds. Oh, man, we need a card to get here, too? Dang. Well, life sucks right now. I guess we do have to go to the bridge. Oh. Ooh wee, buoy key. Quoting Dante. The world is in our hands. This is the See, I talked about that. Um, to infect one fifth of the Earth's waters. Whoa. Yeah, check this out. So Veltro's been resurrected after their destruction and after the fall of Terra Grigia. He's quoting Dante. Send a team to Valcoin and Mock Airport. Look for something linked to this ship, O'Brien. Um, yes, I read you. That sweet, sweet surveillance. I'll send Quentin Key. <laughs> yep. What? You two, get ready to move. Oh, yeah, these chuckleheads. <laughs> Snow hates you. Uh, Marsh Cat, hope you are doing awesome because you're awesome, John Lee says. Thank you. I'm doing great. Enjoying my day off and excited about things coming up. 
How are you doing? Awesome too? I hope you're doing awesome too. Yes, we are, and it is my day off as well, so happy day off to you. I don't see a thing. I thought the Alright, so we have Jill still lost out in the Mediterranean. Um, we have Chris looking for her with Jessica. And then we have uh, Quint and Flynn, I think, or... Are that they're going to be sent to the location Chris was at in the snow. So they're going to go finish what Chris and Jess started. All right. Find out what happens on the next episode of Resident Evil Revelations. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys being here. I will see you all in the future. Peace.